Uh, welcome to another one of our live shows. We've not done this for a little while now. We've been super, super busy at MWC 2018. We've all been in Barcelona. Me, you, Basil, Gareth, everyone has all been running around. Even Tom, our cameraman, has been out there. So today we're going to talk about what we've seen over the last week when lots we're in Barcelona. And lots um, of phones. Even over a week now, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually Tuesday. So yeah, pretty much we were coming home this time last week um, or a day later. Yeah, so we've seen lots of phones. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Samsung Galaxy S9. Obviously, that's the big, the big mm. headline one. But you've also tried a lot of other phones while at the show. Yes. and there's other stuff as well yeah. so should we kick off with the Galaxy S9 and also put anything in the comments if you've got any questions um, on what we're talking about and if there's any phones in particular you want us to talk about we will let you know absolutely so the Galaxy S9 was mm. the biggest headline perhaps of the show even if the phone itself wasn't the biggest surprise or yeah. innovation available on the show floor it does for all intents and purposes look like an S8 mm. and the S9 Plus like an S8 Plus mm. Uh, it's a very iterative design. It's a very iterative update from Samsung. Mm. Um, it's really focused here on the camera and the AI. Those are the two core focuses. So the rear camera, it's saying, is even better than the S8. It's got amazing low light potential. It's much better than the Pixel 2 XL in the demo that we saw. So mm. it also does 960 frames per second slow-mo like Sony. Um, so it's a real camera push. This is yeah. where Samsung has focused all its pressure on. Um, and we've got an S9 in, and we've also got the S9 Plus in. Matt Swider and Gareth Beavis are currently doing day-by-day -day updates on how they're finding it during their review period. Um, our full reviews will be going up very soon, but not quite yet. A bit um, later, I will put the day-by-day uh, -day reviews into the chat so everyone can check yeah. it out. I think we're on day five at the moment. So or even, yeah, even a little yeah. bit further. Um, and yeah, they've been testing out a lot. And I think the latest one that went up is about the uh, is about the low-light camera, mm. especially. So yeah. that would be... So if you're interested in that, yeah. sure, there's that. It also has... Um, AR emoji, which is uh, Samsung's answer to an emoji mm. on the iPhone mm. X. It's different, for sure. Mm. Um, it creates a 3D avatar of yourself by taking a selfie and then moulds it very loosely to a 3D avatar on screen. Some are closer representations to yourself than others. Yeah. Uh, it all depends what it sees. And yeah, it's a bit of fun. It does make a 18 custom emoji that goes straight into the Samsung keyboard though, which can then be shared with any third party messaging app, which actually makes it quite easy to share these customized emoji with friends and family. It doesn't matter if you're on text or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or anything else. Yeah, uh, the thing I always reminds me of whenever I'm seeing these AR emojis is Bit Emoji, which is in Snapchat. Mm. If you've ever seen that, where people would create their own thing that they can send. It's sort but of a mashup, right? Yeah, it's a mashup of that, but this is actually taking your, your real life face. And it's also a bit of fun to mess around with, like, again, like mm. an emoji where you can do the whole lion face and stuff and, like, try and put your tongue out. But yeah, that, that will cover it properly enough for review later on yeah um, absolutely there'll be more in that in our full review which will yeah. be coming to the site very shortly um, of course though it wasn't just Samsung at MWC there was a whole swath of phone yeah. launches and announcements another big one was Nokia back again the famous brand now uh, owned and well not owned but manufactured by HMD which licenses the Nokia name for its phones from Nokia itself which mm -hmm. is still a company going along in a software sort of capacity but the hardware is done by HMD but the phones carry the Nokia brand and we had got five phones from them five. four smartphones and one feature retro yeah. throwback the Nokia 8110 4G a throwback to the 1996 8110 mm -hmm. uh, which has uh, its famous banana phone yeah. shape curve and a slider uh, and again you get a banana shape <laughs> curve you get a slider mm. it's not as heavy it's not as big it's not as mm. wide it's not as thick um, it's all been simmed down it has 4G it has Twitter it has Facebook it has Google Assistant it has Google Maps kind of cool stuff feature phone though so all these experiences are massively pared down so would you say it's even better than the 3310 that came out last year and it got lots of attention there it but does it, it certainly does more than the 3310 mm. in terms of features and what it offers it does yeah. more it's slightly more expensive mm -hmm. Maybe the shape isn't quite as ergonomic as well as the 3310, yeah. but it goes places the 3310 can't with that 4G and those additional applications and the Google, um, Google tie-in system. as well. So yeah. it will be it's interesting impressive. to see. Again, it's not. It, it's more of a phone aimed at uh, people in developing countries where they're looking to make the step from feature to smartphone. Mm. Um, and this is sort of a, it's an upper end of a feature phone, not quite a smartphone, but it gives you a nice bridge and it provided at a low price point. Mm. Um, so it may not be a worldwide hit, but it could be very popular in certain markets. And if you love a bit of nostalgia, if you love the 8110, you may recognize it also from the Matrix that was a slightly adapted 8110 with a spring-loaded slider, which sadly this one is just a manual one, but you know, that was a 1999 
blockbuster smash hit, so you may know yeah. your phone from there. So say HMD Global are still doing this again next year, what mm. phone would you want to see from Nokia next year? Well, they're actually asking people what sort of right. phones do you want. They've they've now got two in what they're calling the Nokia Original Series, yeah. so it does sound like they're going to do more. Uh, I'd like to see idea. kind of their wacky phones, yeah. um, the teardrop phone, the mm. lipstick yeah, phone. Yeah. You know, when they were going a bit mental, mm. late 90s, really pushing the design boundaries yeah. and form factors and ergonomics of a mobile phone. Um, stuff like that would be really cool. Uh, another easy one would be the 8210, yeah, the classic yeah. little phone at the time. It was like, oh my God, look how tiny it is. It's so yeah. cool. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was one. Um, but I'd like to see, you know, push real push the boundaries, engage or something like that. Although that's probably also or maybe a bit much. Yeah. And then ninety five, I love that phone. Yeah. yeah I had the black edition. Mm. Yeah. Um, but they did some smartphones as well. Oh yeah. They had yeah. The, let's talk about them. That, that's the thing that people actually care Android about. Android <laughs> powered, no Windows phone <laughs> anymore. Nokia yeah. is on Android. Um, you get basically a stock Android experience as well, which mm-hmm. means super fast updates. Mm-hmm. Nokia's also signed up to the Android One program, which means that all the phones it's launched, Nokia 8, Sirocco 7 Plus, and the new Nokia 6, are guaranteed the next two major dessert updates yeah. from. Google, so that would be Android P and Android Q. Mm. It's also guarantees them three years of security updates. So yeah. it gives the phones an immediate sort of longevity. Um, you know, if you're going to have this phone for two or three years, you will still have the latest security updates and pretty much the latest software. Mm. Because it's running stock, it should arrive quite quickly. That's especially great because we haven't. We've only just had a year of Nokia's return. We've only had H and D Global around for a year, so we're not really certain on how good they are going to be on updates. They seem to be quite good so mm-hmm. far, but are they going to be able to keep that pace? So actually, promising that is yeah, that's a really fantastic. Yeah, thing. and of course, you know, it, it doesn't mean the phones won't necessarily slow to a halt after two years. Exactly. I mean, we do see most phones sort of start to struggle after two mm. years with newer software on older hardware but mm. it will be interesting to keep watching and obviously we'll be testing them thoroughly throughout their duration to see if they can live up to the hype mm. um, the headline for Nokia is the Nokia 8 Sirocco a phone it says Sirocco. it's built for the fans yeah um which means it's got a nice design, mm. uh, curved front, curved back, Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge-esque. Yeah. Um, it's got dual camera on the back. It does the bofi front and rear camera at the same time. It's the Nokia um, way. It's got the first one's plenty of power. Mm. Um, it is you running last year's kind of Snapdragon chipset, yeah. which is possibly the, the one major minor point. There's also no headphone jack, which may irk some people. Mm. But that older chipset, while sort of day-to-day doesn't really matter, again... Down, you know, a year down the line, when that chipset is technically two years old, is that going to show mm. a bit more? And the price point at about 149 euros, euros, mm. that's up there with like some of the best phones around. So it's not cheap. You could get a Nokia um, 8 for that. You could, but yeah. this one looks, feels better. It, feels it works better, slightly yeah. nicer. The camera is better. Yeah, the Nokia had a totally fine design. It was not. Yeah, it was not this this feels out, and so looks yeah. really premium, mm. um, and it sort of gives us a glimpse of maybe what Nokia will bring us in the future in terms of premium design. Mm. I don't see this phone being a huge hit for them, mm-hmm. but I think it's a teaser of maybe what we can expect um, in the next six to eight, twelve months. Yeah. You've also got the Nokia Seven Plus, a mid-range large screen phone, mm. uh, a nice nice design, looks smart, premium, neat. Um, Big screen, as I say, going up against the likes of the Xperia XA2 Ultra Ultra, yeah. and other big screen phones like that. So that sort of mid-range price with a six-inch or thereabouts display, yeah. uh, really hitting a niche of people who like gaming and movies on the move but don't have a budget for one of the big flagships. So that's got a potential to do quite well. Mm. The new Nokia 6, another mid-ranger, smaller screen, but it's going up more against the likes of the Moto G series. Yeah. Um, at, at, providing a solid android experience at a reasonable cost doesn't do anything to particularly stand out or wow you but it will give you hopefully a good all-round experience finally nokia one lots of phones to go through as we've said already but mm. i'm blasting through that and we'll get to your questions this soon is, this is the only time of year we get to do this really isn't it <laughs> yeah so nokia one um is slightly different because it runs android go now there's mm. a couple of other phones one for zt one from alcatel at the yeah. show as well these three phones all these three phones run android go a lighter version of the android operating yeah. system allowing them to run on phones with lesser hardware specs in terms of processor and ram um that means the phones can be made cheaper mm-hmm. and thus you can make an Android experience smartphone for regions where, you know, people are a little bit more tighter on cash. It's uh, yeah. all about the sort of sub $100 handset mm-hmm. is, is really the hook here, giving you that full, f- almost full fat Android experience. You mm-hmm. get maps, you get YouTube, you get Assistant. They're all Go versions of those apps, yeah. so they're lighter. That means you're just leaner. They run leaner on the phone. It's definitely not as quick. 
or as fluid experience as you'd mm. get on a traditional Android handset, but it does work, and that is the sort of point of Android Go, and that's why Google is doing it. It just wants to make affordable Android handsets. That no one's going to set the world alight, but they're yeah. for people who want to make that leap into the smartphone um, but don't have the money to spend it on more expensive handsets. So it's, it's an interesting new opportunity for the android ecosystem Definitely. and these three phones the alcatel is it one, one x one x so you one said x. briefly at the show and i agree with you yeah, yeah. it is a lot slower and there's a zte as well is um, it yeah, blade kind of... v9 vita maybe or is that a different one but there's a zte one as well so there's a v9 light something like that yeah. sorry yeah so but... there's a so, so there's three phones zte nokia yeah. one alcatel one x um worth keeping an eye on those they cost sub 100 dollars mm-hmm. us dollars uh handsets um could have a lot of potential in certain markets. And it's about to see a few more coming through as well in mm. the next couple of months. Yeah. yeah, But I'd probably not any of the huge brands I wouldn't really think would embrace that. But I don't know. I it think... depends. If you want to break, if you want to break uh, certain markets, Latin America, mm. India, uh, are two huge markets, uh, Central sort of and Northern Africa as well. These are huge markets with sometimes some of the bigger companies can't tap because of their price points. Definitely. So it, there is a lot of potential there for uh, maybe more developed names to break into mm. new markets. So it'll be interesting one to watch. So I'm just going to give a few shout outs mm. at the moment to Talk people to who are in the chat. So hi Joshua Beyondo who seemed to be waiting for quite a long time before the show <laughs> even started. Sorry we were starting a little bit late there. Thanks for sticking around. Um, just going to run through and see if we've got any questions. Hi Afrin Az- Aziz. Uh, hi Walid Ali. And everyone else who's in the chat. Um, Simpal Dogra has asked Moto release date. So I did a lot with Motorola stuff. Great question, because we thought maybe Moto would give us something, but they didn't. Yeah, so this year they didn't announce any phones at MWC. Instead, Lenovo, Motorola, between the two, they announced uh, two new yoga three new yoga pads uh, at the show but that was all they announced mm. and instead behind the scenes they had a setup with all of the Moto G handsets back from the Moto G which was 2013 if I'm right all the way through to 2018 and a big question mark over the top of a Motorola size phone um, so yeah I expect that to come very soon but they didn't take they didn't they didn't take the opportunity of the show to announce it. I think they probably want to make their own noise about it, really, is what they're thinking there. The G Series, remember, is the best-selling mm. Motorola series mm. ever in the history of the company. You know, we're talking Motorola V3 Razor. Mm. We're going all the way back to StarTac, DataTac. Yeah. It's the the G series is it's Motorola's best ever selling series, so it, it's coming. <laughs> you can understand <laughs> yeah. why maybe they want to maybe separate it from the hustle and bustle of MWC. Yeah, definitely, and it's one we're looking forward to. And the teaser at MWC mm. suggests we shouldn't have to wait too long. But yeah. also, they tease maybe a retro phone. Yeah. So um, we were talking. I was I was talking to their CEO, who they refer mm. to as YY, in uh, in an interview, and I basically asked him because of the return of Nokia again, coming back, doing the retro phone again, basically, will they ever consider doing a Motorola Razr V3? That seems like the phone that everyone would get really <laughs> excited about alongside the Nokia 3310 uh, as a retro handset. He didn't really fully answer that question, um, but he started talking about foldable handsets and how we might see something in the future. Again, I'll put the article into the chat so you can all take a look at his exact quote. I can't remember exactly. It was over mm. a week ago. Um, but he basically suggested slightly that we may see a retro handset from the company, but it in a new in a new way he didn't so, rule it out so yeah. we're saying you're telling us there's a chance exactly and we like that yeah like I think what he was saying was he heard the name Razor and he was thinking and basically to me it sounds like a hint that we may see a new maybe even a high-end handset from Motorola which has that Razer branding on it. It would make sense, foldable phones, talking about the Razer name, like that was mm. what the Razer was known for, being that flip phone, being that iconic flip phone. So maybe maybe we can see that Razer name come back but with a foldable display. But also, I can't imagine that's going to come out next month. Would you guys like to see that? Let us yeah. know in the chat now. Be sure to. S- you know, thumbs up for a Razer V3 reboot. Yeah. Thumbs down for a Razer V3 reboot. V3 reboot. Moving on though, Sony were at the show. Yeah. They had an announcement Sony Xperia XZ2 and XZ2 Compact. So it's a new sort of duo of flagships uh, which do come under the come under the premium tier of XZ mm. lines, but we've not had the latest reboot of that. So for all intents purposes, the XZ2 and the XZ2 Compact are its two new flagships. Mm. The Compact again being that being able to hold in one hand, easily navigate with your thing, with your thumb, uh, without two hands, yep. juggling it about, so you get a smaller screen at a lower resolution, uh, or is it full HD now? 
Uh, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> so Gareth read our hands-on it. reviews of both of those <laughs> on the website for all the details. Um, but Sony has sort of revamped slightly its design language, giving us um, glass front and back, um, a shinier, glossier, slightly more premium maybe look and feel. Anyway, a much more up-to-date look and feel, that's mm. for sure. Um, the bezels are still relatively large in today's world of 18 by 9 screens with really slender bezels. Yeah. Um, Sony's still sticking with that particular design language, which some people love and some people don't so love. Mm. Um, and it is at least allowing it to distinguish itself between phones which are basically going almost all screen and doing slender bezels or a notch or, or similar. So it's still treading its own path. The plus side of the bezels as well, go landscape somewhere to rest your thumbs or your hands while you're watching a movie or playing games. So it's not all bad. Gareth's just jumped in the comments and said it's full HD. So there you go. There you go. HD. So that's full HD <laughs> on the compact, which is really good. Thanks, um, Gareth. <laughs> um, so they've Always upped that because it's been 720 in the past. We're hoping that this compact, the last compact, wasn't so hot. No. The XZ1 compact. No, so we're hoping amazing. XZ2 okay. compact with um, the upgraded internals and that full HD mm. display will really put that because that's one of the best sort of high-end but easy to hold phones and there's not many of those out there anymore it's really a bit of a struggle to find a phone that you can use comfortably one-handed especially if you've got smaller palms mm. um, so the compact certainly has a place in the market um, whether it's as hot as it was as everyone's sort of more accepting of the larger screen these days yeah. remains to be seen but Sony does have a lot going on it's also upgraded you know in in reply to Samsung going we can do 960 frames per second at 720p which Sony was doing last year mm. um, Sony have gone right we can still do 960 frames per second but we can now do it at full HD so you're going to get even better looking slow-mo footage so if you love a bit of slow-mo if you love the slow-mo guys mm. on YouTube for example then this could be your starting of your own slow-mo adventure uh, the Sony stuff is quite clever there's various functions around the slow motion stuff so it's always fun to watch we've got a few people talking about Sony in the comments so mm. I'm just going to address those yeah. uh, Raiger Law I think I pronounced your name right sorry if I haven't he says hey do you think that Sony made a mistake, made the wrong move, making the XZ2 11, 11 millimeters thick, or do you think that as long as it's comfortable in the hand, uh, the attractive and attractive, the thickness is fine? Yeah, I'm not a huge. I'm not hugely against really thick phones as mm. long as the design is nicely done. There is a slightly curved back to the Sony, which helps yeah. hide mask that thickness slightly. Um, could they have done more to mask it? Potentially, yes. Um, but at the end of the day, if the overall package works and if it means that they've been able to increase the battery life or battery capacity, which in turn increases battery life, then that's a particular trade-off that I'm willing to take. Mm. Um, so I'm not totally against it, but it will very much come down to that sort of personal preference in the hand. Some people like sort of the weight and the reassurance and that sort of thickness to show sort of premium quality, well-built, um, cost you a bit of money, whereas others are looking for some a slightly more lightweight and slender to sort of slip into a jean pocket. Mm. Um, so I'd say go to your local store, try it out when it's Definitely. available um, see how you find it in the hand but I'm not, long, I wouldn't yeah. initially be put off straight away by the thickness of the phone definitely and Sean Vega Velez still referring to the XZ2 he said why did Sony use this new rear design for the Sony Xperia XZ2 what do you think I think Sony has realised it's got a bit of criticism maybe mm. over the last couple of yeah. years of, of no not really innovating in the design space and while there are a lot of Sony fans out there who enjoy the sort of omnibalance sort of quite yeah. um industrial design language that they've used I think maybe they've realised and looked at the rest of the trend of the market and seen when everyone else is going and maybe they felt like perhaps they've been left behind a little bit mm. um, it certainly felt that way from, from where I've been sitting I've reviewed quite a lot of Sony phones over the last couple of years and you, you pick it up and you know, in the hand they're, they're great they're solid phones they've got a really good amount of power screen's pretty good camera's pretty good but when I then use all its rivals, you're like, oh, it just doesn't look yeah. or feel quite as nice as the others. And so adding that glass, glass, that glass back is something that is becoming sort of linked directly with premium now because is, metal yeah. bodies are all the way down in the G series yeah. now in Motorola. So you can mm. you can pick up a full metal phone for not a lot of money. Mm. Honor does really good stuff, mm. low cost full metal bodies, for example. So that sort of pull of a full metal unibody is not a premium pull anymore. You can get that at most price categories. I think it's going to be year of glass, isn't it? I think mm. everything is going to be becoming glass, anything like flagship at level. Um, back on your last question, Gareth just saying that uh, Sony made it thicker to fit more in. They told me, ideally, they want to go back to a flat slate with their design. So again, thanks for that, Gareth. Um, right, one more thing on Sony, and I've now entirely forgotten where I was. Um, also, Gareth is shouting out your amazing yellow jumper, but he also thinks it might be papaya blue. It might be blue? Yeah, papaya blue. I don't really know what... 
I don't know. I don't know really don't know what purple blue is. That Maybe sounds he's like drunk. sounds like it's blue. But yeah, yeah, I'd say that's yellow probably. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Right. Hamas Gull is saying, yes. why isn't Samsung giving their updates on the Samsung Galaxy X? Why well, don't we hear about the Samsung Galaxy X at MWC? I mean, we, we haven't heard officially anything from Samsung about the Samsung Galaxy S. There's been various patents pulled up from various offices around the world, mm. which suggest it's, it's, it's potentially looking at flexible phones, but it's fair to say that most companies will be looking at some form of flexibility. Um, it's more about having the components ready to go and at yeah. the moment, most smartphone components aren't flexible. You can make a flexible battery, you can make a f- flexible mm-hmm. uh, screen, and you can make a flexible uh, plastic shell. But at the moment, finding flexible resistors and um, component boards um, and all the other gubbins that needs to go in, camera modules, etc., they just don't exist. Or if they do exist, they're too expensive. They're not at a point of mass market where it can drive the price down and make an affordable handset. There's a lot of, lot of technology bubbling under the surface, especially in smartphones. We saw it with the Vivo Apex mm. concept as well, uh, um, MWC, which we'll come on to in a bit. Um, but there's a lot of tech under there. There's a lot of tech in the background waiting for its big break but at the moment it's just too early and a fully flexible phone which is sort of what the Galaxy X rumors are pointing at it's mm. just still several years away from being really fulfilled we've seen in the past people try it we had the Samsung Galaxy round mm-hmm. which was a curve like that mm-hmm. uh, which was a bit odd and it didn't it G-flex. didn't move it was just curved then mm-hmm. we had the G Flex and G Flex 2 from LG mm-hmm. which flexed a little bit, but made a terribly creaky plastic yeah, it didn't sound. Sound it sounded good, did like it? You didn't really want to bend it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, the curve was minimal, and then you could push it flat, and it made a dodgy sound. It sounded like it would snap. It didn't. But we've had those, but then we've not had anything more, yeah. suggesting again that the tech isn't ready, and people weren't actually digging it all that much. So yeah. until maybe it's got to a point where it's going to blow us away, mm. a very slightly flexible phone. Mm-hmm. Is just a bit of a gimmick and Definitely. is more than it's worth. And as much as we're not getting ridiculously excited about the S9, it was still a solid update and mm. they've still managed to make a big enough show about it. I think if if we do get a Galaxy X at some point, they're probably just going to be able to tailor that around themselves and it won't have to be on a, on a S9 product. Basically. Galaxy X or Galaxy 10, though? That's yeah, the question. Galaxy X or Galaxy 10. I think yeah. they're just going to avoid that X moniker <laughs> uh, entirely. So, Minecraft, some numbers, player 22, I'm not even going to name all the numbers, <laughs> is asking, is it worth the upgrade from the S8 to the S9? We can't uh, give a full verdict on that at the moment because we haven't properly tested the S9. So, I got hands on with it for an extensive period during MWC and... Initially, if you've got an S8, I'd say no, it's not worth it. The S8 is still a very good handset. It looks just as good. It feels just as good in the hand. Mm. It still has a decent slug of power. Mm. I'd say, I, but to, to be honest, if you're, most phones usually aren't worth upgrading just on that yearly yeah. increment. You usually want to wait two years to notice a big change from yeah. what you've currently got in your hand. So that's not exclusive to Samsung, but there's no getting away that the S8 and the S9 are so similar Mm. um the camera has been upgraded it's got slightly better internals but same design same screen um still running android oreo okay the s8 hasn't quite got oreo yet which is kind of annoying i mean hurry up samsung we're march now it's getting at the moment but yeah Yeah, yeah, it's taking its time whereas the s9 ships with oreo so unless you want a slightly better camera and the latest oreo and the latest power yeah i don't know if it's quite worth the money to upgrade if you're on an s7 then the S9 definitely looks like an interesting proposition because you'll be moving to that Infinity display for the first time mm. and there'll be two generations of power increase under the hood as well, so that'll be decent. Plus, this is going to push the S8 price down. Mm. which is S8 really could good. become a good buy. Yeah, it could become a good buy. I mean, not that it wasn't already, but yeah. it could become very interesting. Yeah, a much more affordable buy. Um, one other question, which wasn't entirely MWC related, we'll get back to the mm. remainders of MWC in a moment, um, was a little bit earlier, and I've lost this question. Uh, what do you guys think of the Leet OnePlus 6 from Mah- Mahabub? So the links at the moment are suggesting maybe a notch style design, yeah. as we've seen on iPhone 10 and you're on the, the notch. Asus you're the, you're the glass bag. Zenfone 5 uh, Zenfone 5 and Zenfone 5Z. Yeah, yeah. so... Ways. That's been heavily touted. The notch yeah. is also being rumoured for other handsets. Mm. Will OnePlus do it? I don't know. I mean, that might be quite an expensive display point mm-hmm. for them to add in, and they've always tried to avoid high cost points. That's why yep. you're still on full HD, even with the 5T. They've not made that QHD jump yet. 
Um, and the screen on the 5T is great. Like, it, it is great. It's MLA, yeah. Yeah. It's so it's colourful, vibrant, punchy. But, yeah. I don't think it's going to be too long until we find out. Yeah. I think probably around June again, usually they seem to be doing yeah. six month incremental updates at the moment, don't they? So, uh, yeah, I, I would it's, expect it's to worth find keeping out an eye on stuff. stuff and yeah. rumours these days tend to be pretty on the money. Mm. Um, but even early rumours, it's still a bit early to be overly confident in the rumours. Give it maybe till the end of May and see if the same stuff is still being leaked or if it's changed. If it's, if it's still the same stuff, then we can be relatively confident that's what we'll see. But if stuff changes, then that doesn't that, that reduces our confidence in what we'll see. Uh, Sean Vega Velez, who asked a question earlier, is saying no more notches. So he's clearly not a fan of the no notch. No more notches. I expect more of that this year. I mean, and one company trying to evade the notch is Vivo. They had a concept (laughs) they had a concept phone at MWC so this isn't a phone that you'll be able to buy or will go on sale. It's purely a demo of the technology as I said sort of bubbling under the surface which is going to be possible maybe in the next 12 to 18 months on our smartphones. Um, So they they took me into a little side room and they showed me off this little phone um, called the Vivo Apex Complex Mm. and it is pretty cool. It's a lot of screen and that's kind of the point. Uh, almost bezel-less, you've got one point, maybe three millimetres around three sides of the screen and then your 4.5 millimetres at the bottom, a very little strip of bezel, but almost all screen on the front, which just looks fantastic, frankly. Um, then you realise there's no front finger scanner, there's no earpiece, there's no sensors, there's no camera, and you're like, okay, have they just forgotten Ow. all this stuff? <laughs> yeah. How did you so do this? <laughs> the earpiece cleverly is embedded under the display mm. and then it uses vibrations through the screen and through the metal frame to uh, amplify the sound into your ear and it's directional, so it's amplifying into your ear, not to everyone else in the room. Um, so you can still take a call. I did a demo call. It works nicely. Um, the light sensor is on the top of the phone, uh, on the top edge rather on the front, um, so it still can do that. Um, that's to help with screen brightness. The proximity sensor, which puts the display to suit when you hold it to your ear so you don't have the screen on and waste battery when you're on a call, that's also embedded under the screen, so that was a nice little feature. And the front-facing camera, this was kind of cool, bit of a gimmick, sure, but kind of cool. It pops up from the top of the phone. You go load your camera app, you select front-facing camera, and it just, in 0.8 seconds, it raises, just goes and oh. Out the top of the phone it comes. A nice little feature. There's a little video on our website with the full write-up with us going on with that phone. So mm-hmm. you can check that out. And then another nice feature Just is the, the in-display fingerprint scanner. So we saw another phone at CES in mm. January this year, which had an in-display fingerprint scanner from Vivo. From Vivo. You could... It had a little icon on screen, a fingerprint icon. Put your finger over that, and that's where it would scan your finger. This time they've increased that area of scan to almost half of the display, which means you can put your finger pretty much anywhere on the bottom half of the screen and Mm. it will still scan your finger. Mm -hmm. A really cool feature. Although, again, it's not quite ready for mass market yet. It is a little slow. You have to press quite hard onto the display. Mm. And when it came to actually registering our fingerprints, it was quite a time-consuming process because it didn't register every tap. You had got to press and hold and press quite hard each time to register it properly. And then when you come to unlock, press and hold. But it shows the technology that's possible. And with that increased screen area, you can also do dual fingerprint scanning so you can register two fingerprints and have to acquire the two fingerprints to get into those really saucy photo files on your phone it feels like something mission impossible there doesn't it and (laughs) and it doesn't even have to be both your fingerprints it could be yours and someone else's so maybe you and your partner have some particular (laughs) albums that you only want to view together and don't want the other person looking at when they're not around so that your mind goes straight there john so you go (laughs) Well, give me other examples. See, yeah, you true. can think of Good none. Point, yeah. um, but again, um, for business devices, enterprise, if there's certain yeah. locked folders that people want to uh, lock down with an extra layer of security, having two people, mm. it's like the two keys for the nuclear code, right? Yeah, sure. It's that added layer of security, and it does work. Again, it's not as smooth, slick, or quick as mm. our current fingerprint scanners, mm. but the technology is there. It does work, and again, in sort of hopefully 12 to 18 months, that sort of tech will be in general phones. So yeah. it's, it's quite an exciting concept, um, mm-hmm. and well worth a read if you want to find out more on the site. Definitely. Um, uh, Ritek Singh is asking about the Huawei MateBook X Pro. We're going to focus yes. on the phones here at the moment, really, um, because I, I haven't actually used the MateBook X Pro, even though I did do the Huawei stuff. Um, I did the MediaPad 5 while we're at But MBC. talking about pop-up cameras, now that has a uh, yeah. Okay, nifty yeah, little, that then. Yeah, nifty that little pop-up camera, um, which I've I've popped up a couple have of you? times. Have I you? Have I have. I took the liberty to pop, pop in it up. Pop in the lock-in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, again, <laughs> so, 
So, what, what, so why are they doing that? Why there's a little pop-up camera within the within one of the keys on the Mega again? It's, Pro it, 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 it's what, what takes up bezel space around mm. your screen on your laptop. James's laptop here. It's got a camera at the top, which means there's a sizable bezel along the top of the screen. Yeah. You remove that camera, you can expand the screen size, um, but you don't want to lose that webcam, uh, especially for video conferencing. Mm. So putting it into basically the F row, mm -hmm. right into the middle of the F row, you press the key and it pops up kind of nice uh, a couple of little things people have noticed while using it if you're typing the people viewing the video get a great view yeah, of your fingers you typing that? because yeah, that's good, is it? because of the angle of the camera yeah. um, and yet it's not quite as natural yeah. it's more of a slightly unflattering up your chin double triple chin shot um, <laughs> rather than the one at the top of the screen yeah. so it's not perfect but it's an interesting uh, implementation for sure the other thing while we were noting they said that they've done a lot of research on this and um, even though it's not something they've seen from other competitors before um, they've seen a lot of people doing this whole Mark Zuckerberg thing of covering over their cameras on their computers mm. um, and like put masking tape at the top of it and rather than ruining the design on the MateBook X Pro with that amazing with that amazing basically bezel screen they wanted to have that, that you could just have it securely tapped away inside and it's you, a nice little privacy feature. You haven't got to worry about that little security guy looking through your camera and being like, hello. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's that's mm. a, one of the real elements that they wanted to do it for. But also, yeah, they want to save a bit more space there. Uh, while we also had three new tablets at, uh, at the show. Yep, media pads. Yeah, M5s. media pads, M5s. Um, again, kind of iterative upgrades. They, they, they look nice, though. They, they, they're going to be reasonably expensive um, Android tablets. Um, we're going to do our full review soon for those. But yeah, not anything absolutely thrilling. Interestingly, though, not many people are doing Android tablets. They've been very wow. few Android tablet launches right over the last yep. sort of eighteen months. Yeah, so. even even at the show, we saw three from Huawei, one from Al two from Alcatel actually, um, and I think one more if I'm right, but not anything. That's about it. You yeah, know, like nothing. Samsung and Sony have seemed to have gone yep. really cold. There was a point in time when they were churning them out at every big show. Well, we haven't seen a Samsung um, a Sony tablet for what three years probably. Yeah, and and Asus used to do a decent yeah. little line of Android tablets, which they, they've gone quiet on mm -hmm. that. Um, obviously, Google's Nexus line was mm -hmm. was interesting at least. Uh, that doesn't really happen anymore. HTC was kind of involved with that. Nothing there. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's it's interesting, and it's interesting to see that while we decide that there is still a market there for yeah, tablets, and, and um, doubling down on it as well by yeah. releasing three tablets and going for like yeah, go, going for gold with it really, and that's yeah. I wonder if it's because people are more accepting maybe now of the iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. A tablet can be a computer. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. You know, again, can Apple kind of be thanked after dominating the market for maybe reinvigorating it as well? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, so, K Samanth, I'm just going to leave your name there. Uh, are there any phones with 4K displays at MWC? Gareth's already answered your questions. None. There, there were absolutely no phones with 4K displays. The only company doing it really at the moment is Sony, and they they leaned on the. Uh, they didn't do anything for the premium line this year, did they? So. No. Yep. So sorry about that. <laughs> In fact, not any QHD phones apart from. Apart from Samsung. Apart from Samsung's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you are. All but the then not the full HD, though. Yeah. We've still got many flagship launches to come, though, this year. Yeah. Um, anything else from MWC that you want to talk about? Well, Alcatel are sort of... Yeah. Maybe not as, as much of a household name as others, but no. they're really... Um, Giving up a more sort of broad portfolio yep. of affordable handsets, they they don't deal in the high end. They they're very much focused on a more affordable end of the scale. But they are got a couple of. I had well, to play around with some of them. And so they announced specs versus price. Yeah. Not bad. You thought Nokia went hard. They announced uh, Asus. No, no, not Asus. Sorry, uh, Alcatel announced seven new phones at the mm. show. That seven new phones across a variety up until around two hundred fifty pounds. I think is the pricing for the Alcatel Five, which is the top mm. handset, or it might be two hundred fifty euros. I'm not certain on that. Um, and every single phone on that range is an eighteen by nine display. So even the Android Go phone that they have is an eighteen by nine display, which is quite impressive really considering yeah. you considering that's something that we only started to see on flagship phones last year you're getting that on a phone that's going to cost you around 100 pounds 100 dollars mm. even a little bit less that that is genuinely quite phenomenal um but again the rest of the spec is still quite low end especially on the one x and uh, the one series mm. then you've got the three series which is a bit more middle ground some some of the handsets in that range even have like 2k displays which, yep. Yeah, which is quite impressive. Um, but again, everything's eighteen by nine, and then you have the Alcatel Five, which is their um, more premium tier. Which is a more premium tier, but again, we're still talking two hundred fifty pounds. It's going to be it's going to mm. be what we would generally class as a more affordable handset, um, affordable to mid range, um, eighteen by nine again, and just really nice slick design. If you're looking for something again on that more affordable line, maybe look at the Alcatels. 
Yeah. And LG so. was there as well, but no flagship announcement group per se no, from them. You no, had the G7 yet. LG V30 Thing Q, which is a slightly updated version of the LG V30 Isn't from there the end of last there year. I don't know, is there I maybe? Think it's a yeah. V30S Thing Q, if yeah, I'm right, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it's an interesting name. It's a slight upgrade spec bump mm. on, on the V30 last year, so it's not a brand new handset, it's not a brand new mm. line. In terms of a flagship launch, we're probably mm. a month or two off still from seeing a new LG. LG also had a couple of mid-range phones, K8 and K10+. Plus. Yeah. We've been hands-on with those and the V30S ThingQ oh, we've all done everything. on the site. So <laughs> if you want to read more about those handsets, uh, check out online. Again, disappointing to see LG maybe not go bigger this yep. year, but Definitely. also understandable that maybe moving away, having their own press conference, hopefully because they've got something really mm-hmm. cool to show us in a couple of months' time, will be nice. Yeah. Uh, another interesting one, Asus. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can say iPhone X clone, Asus can go. Here you are. <sighs> I can't. I can't even tell you how much the Asus M5 looks like. It looks like an iPhone 10. Again, I'll put this. I'll put this into the chat so you can take a look at some of the photos we've taken with it. But yeah, it's. Um, it's an Android handset. We're going to be looking at mid-range to high-end price mm. for this Asus handset. Um, probably not coming for quite a few months, though. I think it's going to be, I think between April and June or something, they're going to be releasing this. So it's going to be quite a wait for it's this. It's going month. to be much cheaper than the iPhone X, almost half the price you could Definitely. say if you're looking Definitely. at the sort of thousand-dollar plus version. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's got a big screen with an option. It, if you can imagine an iPhone 10 but slightly bigger, that's what it is. Mm. Uh, it's got a decent, it's Snapdragon 600 series chipset, it's a decent mm-hmm. amount of RAM, nice looking, the screen looks great, we've both had a play with it, um, mm. it, it does look really nice, mm-hmm. um, it's bright, it's colourful, it sits well in the hand. Actually, there's the 5Z as well, which will come with the Snapdragon 845. There you are. So yeah, that's going to be a top-end phone there um, from Asus. But yeah, if you're look, if you're an Android fan and you want to keep on Android, but you like the design of the iPhone 10, this is definitely one to look at. But also, there's going to be a lot of notch, notch heavy phones in the next year, I expect. So yeah, yeah, um, expect that a lot across the board. Really, um, someone hey, asked questions? earlier in the chat. Where was BlackBerry at the show? Ah, oh, BlackBerry were at the show. They had a small stand on the TCL booth, which shares with Alcatel, because TCL now licenses the BlackBerry name for handsets, mm. so it's a hardware manufacturer. The BlackBerry, as the company, still exists as a software and security firm. Um, but yeah, BlackBerry Mobile is now run by TCL. They didn't have any new phones to announce, so they're very much pushing the key one and the motion. They gave us a bit of a business update. Uh, I spoke, sat down and spoke to them, so if you want to know how BlackBerry Mobile is getting on, check out my piece on techradar.com but they had nothing new to announce at the moment but we but they have confirmed that they will be launching more phones this year so at some point there will be something new from blackberry yeah definitely um htc htc uh as it has been for several years no nothing going on it has yeah. a big presence it has a decent sized booth it's quite vive heavy showing off its latest vr experiences vive is always a good bit of fun to have mm. um it also had you know part of its booth with its handsets but again nothing new from them and it made such a big announcement at ces with the vive pro yeah that it kind of can get away with that really kind of it? and then we expect an announcement for maybe the u12 or whatever they'll call it mm. april or may yeah, cool. Um, so someone was asking a moment ago, do we know anything about the AirPods 2? That's not going to be coming at MWC. Never, no, never expect Apple, anything from Apple, Apple MWC. Yeah, so we don't really know anything about the AirPods 2. Um, that we're going to have to wait until Apple starts talking Probably about September. Maybe yeah. a hint at WWDC. Maybe. In a few months, but probably September at the earliest. But they've sold surprisingly well. We've seen some sales figures, mm. um, some, well, some predicted sales figures. I'll tell you what, AirPods, I did so. see a lot yeah. at MWC, people yeah. wearing AirPods. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely percolating through. I think mm. people are getting over the stigma of how they look. I yes. mean, there's still some people, I mean, I'm still not completely jazzed about mm. the design of them, mm-hmm. but... I mean, from a practicality standpoint and easy pairing, it, they do very well. Mm. Um, right, so finish things up. Uh, Kay Samantha is back in the chat saying, what up? tell me a phone which I can use for long term, like two years or more. Mm. Well, well <laughs> m- most phones. Yeah. And obviously, UK, it's use case dis- dependent. And mm. will a phone after two years be quite as slick and snappy as it is day one when you get it out of the box? No. Um you load it up with loads of apps, games, music, yeah. photos, uh, and as the storage feels, it doesn't run as quick. Just general as music. new updates come, if you're two years down the line, it's had a several updates, software updates. That software is maybe optimized for slightly new aspects than what your phone's running, so it's mm-hmm. not going to run as slick as slickly. Um, but phones should be lasting two years. Yeah. Um, there's always cases where they don't, mm-hmm. um, which is a real shame. Um, but 
two years, most phones should do it. Whether it'll be seamless throughout those two years, we can't guarantee. Cool. All right, I think that's everything that we covered there. I can't think of anything. Cool. We've missed MWC. No, well, if you want more on our MWC coverage, it's all online, techradar.com. Um, we've got hands-ons of all the new phones. We've got in-depth looks at those. We've also got surrounding features, verses, and a big hub page to give you an overview if you don't want to get bogged down in individual reviews. Go to our MWC hub page, and that will show you... Yes. He's already got it there. Boom, boom, boom. The MWC hub page will give you everything, a nice little brief overview without you having to click on a thousand articles. But if you want to click through, the option's there. Uh, another live yeah. show later this week on Thursday. Thursday, 3.30. Yeah, so be there. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks. He's been James. I've been John. See you soon. See you soon.